So the um, the promise is to go beyond suffering, and um, of course, this can happen through no, through non-dual mind. So um, I once said uh, the summer after we did the retreat with you, we had a situation and it was painful. So I said to Judith, my wife. Um, She said, you're just burying your head in the ground. What do you say to that? Maybe you wanted to take your head out of the ground. Because when you hit, then the illusion's clear, at least for a moment. But that's very unfamiliar. However, if this thing is just a form, is just a gesture, and it's not rooted really deeply in you, then your spontaneity and wisdom and compassion is not triggered by this. Everything continues next moment as usual. Yet, this gesture is not really burying your head in the sand, even in that case. It is just failing to take it out. Or you took it out for a second and then you dug it in again. We do this many times. We come here for the retreat, people become very clear, very free, they say, oh, my old habits, they're all gone. Retreat is finished. They go out there. They do it even more. Same habits, even stronger. Why? Because it feels fresh. It feels new. <laughs> you are recharged. You are fresh and new. So you just get dirty again because it feels so good. You know? That's the way it works. So this actually is a moment of your head out of the sand, the sand of illusion, anger, desire, ignorance. But if it doesn't function, it doesn't make any difference. Okay? Because this is just one. Many times people hit the floor the second time in the interview, and I say, you understand one, don't understand two. What? First is our substance. That's one. Everything returns to one. This moment. That's it. And second is perceived truth. What you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell, what you touch, all truth. That's number two. And number three is action. Somebody's hungry, give them food. Somebody's thirsty, give them drink. Somebody needs help, help them. So that's function. So situation, relationship, function, or substance, truth, function. They all work. So if your substance has no connection to truth, then you just take your head out, fresh air, go back again. If it's rooted really clearly and substance and truth are connected, then you see, oh, sky is blue, tree is green. Then next is you see your proper relationship and function. Oh, there is a beggar, give them some coins. Okay? So then no one can accuse you that you just bury your head in the sand. Maybe you have something unfamiliar in your mind because you practice Zen. Thank God you do. Because this unfamiliarity is actually wonderful. Breaks habits, breaks patterns, brings something new, something fresh, something more of a libéré than before. Okay? Because um, there's another, I, I understand what you're saying, but there's another dimension to it, which is the worries, the suffering, the, the discomfort come also from worrying. And worrying is, of course, dual mind going, should this, should that, and right and wrong, and things like that. Um, when I go for that unity moment, this all disappears for the moment and the moment and the moment. If I try to stay in that, I know it for me it doesn't last long, but let's say I try three seconds. Um, it seems the worry, the problem has gone away, 
But actually, what it requires is that I deal with the situation in a dualistic way. No, it requires that you deal with the situation, but in a non-dualistic way. Hmm. That's when Kongan practice can help you. Hmm. Right. Okay, good. You left Judith out of the second part of the question. I wonder why. <laughs> uh, she she deals with situations maybe more than I do. <laughs> yes, she she does that most of the time. And sometimes she pushes you, yeah. Stefan, Stefan. Okay, so most important, it's wonderful. Yeah, you, you guys have had two generations of a relationship. It's it's fantastic. But what is important? See your own motivation to solve the problem. And then her action and her activity will not seem to interfere so much. Because you have the drive too. And sometimes you do it, sometimes she does it. And then this equilibrium comes. And then she cannot say, come on, come on, come on. Because you do your part. And she does her part. Korean families are amazing in that regard. Because for centuries, due to Confucianism and other rules of society, but mainly Confucianism, the tasks are divided no one steps on the other's territory. The husband never checks the kitchen. The woman never checks the car. Things like that. So everything is clear. Everything is, you do this, I do this. If the results are good, I don't check you. So then there is no, you should do something about it, you know? Because it's your job anyway. If it's not getting done, then we all have a problem. Things like that. So, if we don't open up the dimension of worry and concern and uh, premonition and all that, we just do our job. And we know that the other knows that that's her job. And sooner or later, it gets done. We can give very good incentives to one another. Like, love is a very good incentive. It's a great motivator. So, when that happens, then, you know, you do your share and you love her what she is doing and this emotional, intellectual, and other kinds of equ equilibrium. When it comes, that's harmony, that's bliss. Okay. More questions? Um, as I practice, I feel... Uh, as I practice... No, it's not amplifying you. It's recording you. Just uh, speak into it loud. Okay. As I practice, I feel that my body is uh, becoming more sensitive. And just a little bit of stress, I get headaches or a little bit of nervousness. My teeth. So this headache is your karma. Everybody responds to sensitivity differently. Some people want to eat more. Some people want to scream. Some people want to run. Because if it's overloaded, then it, you're stressed. You're stressed. And the stress is usually up here or here. These are the two major stress centers. Cognitive stress, emotional stress. But if you bring your energy down to your tanjon, that's your best shock absorber. So you can retain your sensitivity, clear eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body, mind, and heart. But... Your center is strong. That means you absorb the shock. You don't react. You don't get stressed. You see it for what it is. So the sound is not loud or soft. It's just this. And it takes time to develop this. But it's better than trying to block some frequencies or block some range, you know, which used to hurt you. Because you can't defend yourself forever. If you have some kind of gap, something comes in. Always. So what's wonderful about our I, my, me, that you cannot defend it perfectly. Soon there's a gap, soon reality comes in. So why not bring down the walls, but make yourself very strong, very clear, very responsive, but not stressable. Everybody can be stressed, of course, after a certain amount of exposure. But you can extend the limits almost 
indefinitely. And that's also the result of practicing. So keep your center strong and don't put your mind here or here or here or any of the physical senses. Keep your mind in your tanjan. Then this mirror mind, this undivided, no thinking, clear like space, clear like mirror mind, it's indivisible, it's unbreakable. And if you live that, then soon stress is reduced and it will disappear. But if you are here with your worries, concerns, any kind of emotion, or some kind of thinking, smart, complicated, interdependent, etc., then you can be stressed, you can be hit.